Hey Ronan, have you ever wondered how much blue dye is in those drinks? No, never really. Oh, okay. Well, you're supposed to say yes. <sighs> Hello, chemistry students. Uh, I'm here with Ronan and Mr. C. And we're going to be collecting data for you all today to help you figure out how much dye is in these two different sports drinks. It's going to involve a couple of parts. The first part is to measure out some pure powdered dye and dilute it quite a bit. Why are you Then we're going to make several dilutions, and then we're going to test their uh, percent transmission. All right, we're starting off by taking the mass of an empty beaker. You can see what it is here. We're going to bump up the mass reading by uh, between 0.2 and 0.3 grams. Then we're going to add powder slowly until it rebalances. Okay, then you can do that now. Wait, what? This will, um, so I'll do time lapse for this part. Uh, so it was 25 point, uh, two, uh, 0.255 off, so, um, point, oh, that's point 0.1. Uh, how much, what do I want to go to? Point, another point 0.5 would make it point 0.3. I don't want that much. Yeah, so I think anywhere in that range is going to be fine because I'll do the calculations and get it specific. Okay, all right. Okay, so there's that. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, the next step is we take the measured out blue one dye powder. We're going to use distilled water to pour into here and dissolve some of it. We're going to put it into here and keep pouring distilled water in to get all of the uh, blue dye into this 500 milliliter volumetric flask. Okay. Now. Yep. How did you make that? We measured it. Okay, now we're going to pour it into here. You ready? Mm -hmm. Carefully, you don't get any on you and you don't spill. Is it blue Gatorade? It's what's in blue Gatorade. Why did you need to pick that up with this? Because we need to get right to that line. All right. So how do you move that down? And bring it in. Okay. Good? Yep, looks good. All right. All right, so next, uh, now that we've got the powder dissolved into this first volumetric flask, it's still very, very dark. And so we're going to pull one milliliter out with the uh, pipette and put it into this 100 milliliter grad, uh, volumetric pipette. So we're going to take one mil of this and put it into here and then fill this so that it's going to be 100 milliliters total.
You don't use this, or you can poke your with using that. I'm going to pull this a little bit back. So the reason we were doing this is this way is because our balance, either the analytical or even the triple beam, we're not sensitive enough to weigh out the small amount that would be indicated if we directly made, let's say, a liter of solution. So we made a more concentrated version, taking a portion of that and diluting that down. So there's actually two molarities that need to get calculated, first for this and then for this. Alright, uh, next step is that we're taking various amounts of this stock solution and we're going to put it into uh, test tubes A through H. A is going to be just this stock solution, H is going to be just water, and the rest are going to have various amounts which are in your lab handout and will also be written on the board. Okay, so now what you can see is that you have got a range of colors from no dye to what we made for a stock solution. And they get lighter as you go to the right, from left to right. So more concentrated, less concentrated, and the nice thing about that is our drink falls somewhere in between. So now you know the concentrations of all of these test tubes. If you plot these on a graph, they give you what's called a calibration curve. And that calibration curve can be used to find the concentration of an unknown. So now what we're going to do is put these through the spectrophotometer and get a percent T or percent transmittance. Uh, readings, how much light is uh, being allowed to pass through each of the different dilutions, and that we're going to translate into a, a graph that's going to plot um, transmittance or actually absorbance on the on the uh, y-axis and concentration that you're going to get by calculating each of these um, diluted. Uh, stock solutions and you're going to plot them on a graph and you should get a nice straight line uh, a nice positive slope okay all right the next step is that we're going to put each uh, solution that we've created in the test tubes into a spectrophotometer read their percent transmittance here so uh, first after the spectrophotometer has been warmed up, I'm going to put in a blank. So this is just plain water. It's important to make sure that the clear side of the cuvette is going to be lined up correctly into the spectrophotometer. We'll finish calibrating with the plain water. And we're all set to go. All right, so we're going to test each of these 
and each time we're going to empty the cuvette into the waste container and we're going to fill it up with the solution from the test tube. It's important to condition these since any drops you can see are pure water here it's going to really affect our concentration and so conditioning makes sure that any drops that are remaining are not going to affect the concentration. Conditioning means filling it up with the solution you're testing. But then pouring it into the waste container. So now the drops that are left behind are approximately the same concentration of what we're going to put in. So to test it, I'm going to refill it again. You'll see. Put on the cap, clean off the sides with the Kim wipe, put it in, we'll hit collect, and you get this transmittance. We'll stop, and I'm going to rename this. Solution A. Was it my turn? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Here, <laughs> all right now that we've gotten the data collected for all of the solutions that we created we're going to test them against our two sports drinks that contain blue blue one okay uh here we go Right, so the last piece of data that you all will need, but I'll include a screenshot of this in a little bit. We're going to get the percent transmittance at the maximum wavelength, minimum rather. I'm gonna analyze and interpolate. So there's the maximum, the wavelength of maximum absorbance or minimum transmittance. You can see all of the values there. And <clears throat> I'll be 
putting those out digitally for people as well. Who are you talking to? The kids that are going to watch the video.